Hello, welcome to a brand new medical surgical lesson. My name is Jessie Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please be sure that you have your accompanying notes with you, your textbook ready, and something to write with so that you can follow along with this lesson. Thank you for listening in to this lesson. This lesson covers the RN care of cardiac patients. This lesson uh, will talk about inflammatory and infectious cardiac conditions, valvular conditions, heart failure, and cardiomyopathy. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to evaluate the status of patients with cardiac problems, such as heart failure, valvular heart disease, inflammation and infection, and cardiomyopathies. You should be as an, able as a nurse to identify clinical assessment findings relevant to each disease process discussed in the lesson. You should be able to teach patients regarding actions on how they can maintain health and well-being when discussed when discussing or diagnosed with cardiac conditions. Now let's talk about heart failure. Heart failure is a term that is uh, referring to the inability of the heart to work effectively as a pump. When the heart has a disease or if it's disease, it cannot effectively pump blood and for circulation. So we're going to start, start talking about one type first, the major types of heart failure, left-sided heart failure. This uh, includes uh, hypertension, coronary artery disease, valvular involvement, aortic and mitral valve both might be involved. There's decreased tissue perfusion from poor cardiac output. There's uh, pulmonary congestion, uh, low cardiac output, like I've said. This was once what was called congestive heart failure, but not all cases present with congestion. So the term that is more appropriate is left-sided heart failure. Typical causes of left-sided heart failure include uh, ventricular failure, hypertensive and coronary artery diseases, or valvular diseases like I said before. Left-sided Failure may be acute or chronic or may be mild or severe, but uh, as you can see, the symptomology depends on um, the patient's pre presentation. So there's two subtypes that we want to recognize that I've included in your notes. That is systolic ventricular dysfunction, which is also called systolic heart failure or diastolic heart failure. Okay. In systolic heart failure, as you can see here, the heart muscle itself can't contract forcefully enough during systole, and the ejective, ejection fraction is usually less than 40%. So the heart walls are a sign of, heart um, of systolic heart failure in this picture. In diastolic heart failure, we have a thick heart. We usually um, see left ventricular uh, function that is preserved, but the heart failure is present. Left ventricle can't relax adequately during diastole. It's seen with people with uncontrolled hypertension or undicta undictated, undetected um, coronary artery disease. Your textbook goes in a lot more detail about that if you need to know more. But um, So left-sided heart failure, diastolic heart failure, or systolic heart failure. Let's move to right-sided heart failure. In right-sided heart failure, uh, the ventricles can't empty completely, resulting in an increased pr uh, pressure and the venous, in the venous system and peripheral edema, low cardiac output. The causes are right or left ventricular MI, pulmonary hypertension, and different things like that can cause that, as you can see uh, depicted by this picture, the dependent edema and the weight gain. That, uh, that might be there. The third kind of heart failure that's talked about in your notes is high output heart failure. Uh, the cardiac output in high output ha heart failure is normal, but the causes are increased metabolic, it causes an increased metabolic needs or hyperkinetic conditions can cause this, such as high fever, anemia, and septicemia, and um, if you want to know more about that, you can read your notes. But this is just a quick overview on the heart failures. 
Okay, here's another picture of heart failure. In continuing on, we want to talk about how heart failure is classified. The American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association provide evidence-based guidelines for staging and managing heart failure, but also hand in hand, the New York Heart Association provides a functional classification system for classifying heart failure. We want to also note the compensatory mechanisms that are happening in heart failure. When cardiac output is insufficient to meet the demands of the body, there are several compensatory me mechanisms that are happening in attempts to improve cardiac output. So these include the sympathetic nervous system stimulation. If you recall the renin angiotensin system activation uh, from previous lectures, chemical responses in myocardial hypertrophy. So there's going to be compensatory mechanisms that are going to be involved while uh, card to get cardiac output up. You can review these in your textbook. That would be a wonderful place to review it, but you need to make sure you understand what those means. In heart failure, I want to just kind of give you a summary of the RN care. Uh, heart failure is caused by systematic hypertension in, major, in the majority of the cases, and the most common cause includes structural damage. Assist the patient for manifestations of right-sided versus left-sided heart failure. I included a picture in your notes there so you can see. Uh, when obtaining history, ask the patient about perceptions of his or her activity pattern. Make sure that you include that. Go back to the assessment lecture if you still are not sure what to assess. You want to make sure that you're assessing the patient for early symptoms of pulmonary edema. You want to make sure that you're monitoring the heart failure of patient on beta blockers carefully for hypertension and the bradycardia. You want to make sure that you are watching weight, a rapid weight gain of three or greater than three pounds in a week, a decrease in exercise tolerance lasting two to three days or any cold symptoms or cough lasting three to five days, nocturia and different things like that would uh, signal that worsening of heart failure. You want to teach patients about community resources. You want to check the patients that are taking DIG for um, DIG toxicity, and you want to monitor their potassium levels for hypokalemia. Um, if you are not able to relate to what I'm talking about, you really need to go ahead and preview a little bit before now, but this should be coming together as just things that you really need to know as an RN. Your textbook does cover a little bit an overview of valvular heart disease or valvular heart disorders, and the main ones that they do cover is mitral valve uh, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral valve prolapse, aortic stenosis, and aortic regurgitation. Make sure that you understand uh, how to take care of patients with valvular diseases. They may become suddenly ill and, uh, or may slowly develop the symptoms. Ask the patient about fatigue levels. Make sure that you understand um, the management of each of these disorders. Uh, mitral stenosis. As pictured in this picture, usually results from rheumatic carditis, which can cause valve thickening and fibrosis and calcification in the patients. Uh, surgical therapy is the only definitive treatment for aortic stenosis and uh, is recommended when patients having syncope or angina is developing and uh, they may need to get that repaired. So uh, you need to be familiar with all the terminology in how to treat it. Your textbook does provide a quick overview on infective endocarditis. It's under the inflammations and infections that affect the heart. Infective endocarditis is a microbial infection involving the endocardium. Usually it's streptococcus um, or staphylococcus um, bacteria that is involved in that. Uh, positive blood culture is a prime diagnostic test. Echocardiography may be done. Um, there are uh, interventions that are listed in your textbook. You need to be familiar with those. Another kind of uh, infection that you need to know is acute pericarditis. It is an inflammation or alteration of the pericardium, which may be fibrous, serous, or hemorrhagic, purulent, or neoplastic. Uh, your, pay, uh, your textbook also covers that. Please make sure that you read over that. The last kind of pericarditis we cover is uh, rheumatic 
Carditis, it, this one occurs in almost half of the patients with rheumatic fever. Uh, it starts with an upper respiratory pump with uh, infection with group A. Beta hemolytic strep is the cause, and you need to be familiar with that, and you need to know how to treat it. Let's talk a little bit, a quick review of cardiomyopathy. We have several cardiomyopathies we need to know, specifically the four types. DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy, is the most commonly seen extensive damage and fibro, fibro, fi, myofibrils that are it interfere with cardio, myocardial metabolism are seen in this and uh, this is the most common cardiomyopathy. The other cardiomyopathies are hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and restrictive cardiomyopathy and arrhythmogenic right ventricular card cardiomyopathy that's mentioned in your book. What is also mentioned in your book is uh, treatment for cardiomyopathy, whether it be heart transplantation. As a nurse, you need to make sure that you understand uh, heart transplant procedures. You're uh, familiar with the teaching that you have to do. You also are familiar with the monitoring. Okay, as far as patients with cardiac pro problems, you want to make sure that you teach these patients on drug therapy, especially older adults, to change positions slowly over orthostat for orthostatic hypotension issues. You want to teach them about their valvular dysfunction, their cardiac infection or cardiomyopathy, the necessity of taking preventative antibiotics before any invasive procedure. You want to assess the patients for depression resulting from altered self-concept or anxiety. You want to assess the patient's coping skills. You want to monitor the patients on beta blockers. I talked about that for hypotension and bradycardia. You want to monitor the pulse for patients taking digitalis. You know about that. So it's really this uh, unit is really just a quick overview of things that you should have already covered in your previous classes. Thank you for listening to this lesson. I hope you have enjoyed the review, the quick review of the RN nursing care for inflammatory and infectious cardiac conditions. If I mentioned anything that you're not familiar with in regards to cardiac conditions or valvular heart diseases and heart failure or cardiomyopathy, uh, really you need to look at your textbook and make sure that you're familiar with the nursing care. For questions about the lesson or the corresponding notes or anything related to this lesson, please feel free to email me. Have a wonderful day.